On Saturday night, Liverpool eventually managed to take the three points in their match against Newcastle, points that may prove to be crucial in the race for the Premier League title. Newcastle United played in a 5-4-1 formation, whereas Liverpool started in their regular 4-3-3 with Sturridge replacing Firmino up front. Newcastle defended in a zonal oriented 5-4-1 middle high block. Newcastle's striker Rondon would look to take out the passing lane to Fabinho. Newcastle's midfielders would press when a player in their zone received the ball. As you can already see here, this could lead to big spaces opening up behind them. Klopp's attacking plan was to pull out the Newcastle midfielders. Liverpool would either have Henderson or Wijnaldum drop back and create a double six with Fabinho. The other one would position himself between the lines. This caused both Newcastle's central midfielders to have an opponent in their zone and be triggered to press forward, opening up spaces behind them. Storage would drop between the lines, trying to get free in the gap that opened up behind the two central midfielders for Newcastle. Here you can see Sturridge making himself available in the gap between the two central mids. Meanwhile, Mane forces the defenders to fall back. Henderson and Fabinho have pulled the Newcastle midfielders out of position, and Sturridge has dropped into the space behind them. When a Liverpool fullback was in possession of the ball, Rondon would usually look to screen the pass to the central defender. However, at the start of the match, he usually went too early. Here, Rondon anticipates for Alexander-Arnold to pass the ball back to a centre-back. At the start of the match he often went too early, which allowed Fabinho to receive the ball with space quite often and allowed Liverpool to continue their attack. When Liverpool weren't able to find a free player in midfield, they would usually have Alexander-Arnold play a long ball in behind. Here Liverpool haven't found a free midfielder, so Alexander-Arnold plays a long ball. Because the spaces between the lines for Newcastle were so big, Liverpool could often win second balls after these kind of long passes. In a 5 at the back system, the weakness is often between the centre back and the wing back, as the wing back is usually more advanced. This was often noticeable during crosses, as Liverpool would constantly play the crosses to the far post to exploit the space behind the third central defender, which could also be seen at the 1 2. Near the end of the first half, Newcastle improved their defensive shape. Rondon would be closer to the midfield, which diminished the space for Fabinho while the midfield and the defensive line would be much closer together. In this example, Fabinho is free on the ball, but not able to do much with it, as the space between the lines is very narrow. Also, let's take a look at these two shots. This is the attack that ends in the first goal for Liverpool. The player pressing the ball doesn't take out the pass to the centre, and the rest of the midfield aren't laid properly. While in this image from the second half, Newcastle are organised much better. The pass to the player between the lines is taken out, and the second midfielder takes up a covering position. The main problem for Liverpool was that there were definitely spaces they could exploit, but the players on the ball weren't always able to play those passes. Here the ball is now played to Alexander-Arnold, and another player might be able to find Sturridge. And here a pass to Sturridge would have again been possible. And here it's Fabinho who doesn't exploit the gap, probably as it would mean passing the ball with his left foot. In addition, as Newcastle were more compact, Alexander-Arnold wasn't able to play balls in behind anymore, and there was no room to win second balls. After 65 minutes, Liverpool switched to a 4-2-3-1, which allowed the fullbacks to move higher up, but this didn't improve their play much, one of the reasons being that the flow of the match went down with Salah, and later two Newcastle players being injured. Eventually, Liverpool got a free kick, with Van Dijk telling Shaqiri to take it, and Liverpool were able to get the winning goal to make it 3-2. And just before everyone in the comments starts talking about the ref or the officials in this match, this is a tactical analysis channel, not a referee analysis channel, so we prefer not to talk about that too much. However, in case anyone cares, I think Alexander-Arnold should have gotten a red card for this, and the free kick from which the winning goal was scored wasn't a foul, so I can understand the frustrations of Newcastle and Man City fans. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you made it to the end, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Links to Instagram, Twitter and Patreon are in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.